Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Founders Park. It's about start, ready to start the 2016 season here. Albany comes to town. First pitch on Friday is 4 o'clock, Saturday 2 o'clock, and Sunday at 1.30. All three games on the Gamecock IMG Network and televised also on SEC Network Plus. Um, one note for you um, that is in the game notes that I want to make sure that you're aware of. The official dedication for Founders Park will be April 23rd, the Saturday game before the Missouri contest. So uh, please put that on your calendars. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to the head coach of the Gamecocks, Chad Holbrook, who will make an opening statement. And we'll open it up for questions. Please raise your hands. And Bailey and Tyson will be around with further mics. Right, good. Well, our players and our coaches are excited uh, that opening day is upon us. Uh, it's, uh, they've put in a lot of work um, since late August, uh, both on the field and the weight room, um, conditioning, a lot of swings, a lot of pitches thrown. Uh, been a lot of work uh, has gone in to preparing for this season. And uh, we're ready to welcome a, a team in to Founders Park and open up the 2016 season. It's, uh, it's an exciting time here for our players. They're excited. Our, our coaches are excited. Uh, from what I hear, our fans are excited. And, and we're going to put a lot of new faces out on the field tomorrow. And some will be uh, getting their first college action. And, um, and, and a lot will be getting their first action as a Gamecock. So uh, it's uh, – we have some new faces, and but it's a it's a the journey starts tomorrow. We're excited to be welcoming Albany. Uh, we'll have our hands full with the, the picture they're going to put out there uh, tomorrow. And um, uh, but that's uh, that's that's he has our players' attention, and and hopefully our kids will be ready to go because uh, uh, it, it'll be a good challenge for us. Um, we're expecting great weather. Uh, I expect uh, the Gamecock fans will be out here in earnest, and and we'll have a pretty full stadium and uh, it's, just, it's just great every, every opening day there's a lot of excitement there's a lot of energy and enthusiasm and and um, we're ready to crank this thing up I know you said that you know the role of Matt Price kind of came into fruition but do you kind of know who you'd go with a, a closer if you if you had to go I mean if you needed him tomorrow no it just depends on the game and it depends on the situation and uh how many runs we're up if it's a tie game. There's, there's some scenarios out there that I'm not going to say I'm going to give the ball the last three outs to anybody. I'm not ready to make that decision yet. Um, if we needed a strikeout, maybe a go to Brandon Murray because, you know, his breaking ball has been very, very good. And he, strike, he struck a lot of our guys out in scrimmages. Needed a ground ball, I might go to Scott or Reagan. Um, uh, but who knows? I mean, uh, we're comfortable with the number of guys at the end of the game. And uh, we're going to let that let that play out as, as the season or these first few weeks uh, first 15 or so games unfold. Do you have in your mind who your opening lineup is going to be? And, and if not, if you haven't settled on a couple of positions, what goes into making that those calls in the next 24 hours? Well, I mean, obviously there's been a lot of thought. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty close there. And there's a lot of positions that are I know who I'm going to put in the lineup tomorrow. Um, but there might be some new guys out there Saturday and Sunday. I don't know if it's going to be the – you know, the same three lineups each game. Um, you know, I, the way I look at it, I, got, I have about 13 starters, 12 or 13 starters that I think are very athletic and very deserving uh, to play. Um, you know, what goes into it, I hadn't quite decided uh, how I'm going to handle the D8 spot and 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 how I'm going to handle the catching situation. There's just so, the, the competition's so close behind the plate. I'm going to continue to talk to our coaches and make a decision probably later tonight and how that rotation will work this weekend. And when I say rotation, I don't think I'm going to catch the same guy all three games. So uh, we'll get those guys in the game and get them some experience and get them going. Uh, but who I put behind the plate obviously affects who I DH and who I put in one of those outfield spots. How does the loss of John Park change things, if at all? And Are you worried at all about kind of a shortness in left-handers or do you feel like you guys are, have plenty there? No, I'm not. Um, that's that's something I'm not worried about. I mean, John had had, had a really nice, solid fall. We hate that we have uh, you know lost him for the year, but you know uh, he's he's he was tender. He needs to get his el elbow fixed, and he'll come back uh, hopefully better than ever. Um, I don't know if it creates a, a huge void because we didn't really know how we were going to use John. Um, uh, but that being said, you, you, you need as many left-handers as you can for matchup reasons. But we're comfortable with the ones we have. And um, obviously, we're a little bit more right-handed dominant this year. 
but our righties have thrown well. And, uh, and most of our righties, especially in the bullpen, uh, have, a, have a pitch they can go to to combat lefties with the change up. And they got some good change ups. And uh, uh, if I had a bunch of right handers in the bullpen that didn't have any off speed pitches or didn't have a change up, I'd be worried about the lefty righty matchup. But our righties, uh, our righties have a way, they got some things that they can throw at some left handed hitters. And I'm fine with obviously Reagan and Fiori's had experience back there. So, um, you know, we, we, we can throw some lefties in there as well. Do you guys still go into the season uh, with the hunted mentality that you've had in the past? Or are you guys kind of changing that approach where you're more the hunter with something to prove? Well, I think this is a, a new team. And, and uh, I think South Carolina will always be um, people be chomping at the bit to beat us. Uh, I mean, we're – all you have to do is look at the last 10, 12, 15 years, we're one of the elite programs in the country. So I feel like we're always going to be hunted. That being said, we got some new guys out that uh, uh, that are understand what kind of we went through last year and are ready to make amends. And, and there's been a lot of, uh, no, really the right word, but there's been a sense of urgency daily here. Um, because of the experience that we went through together last year. And we got some new guys here wanting to make a difference and change, uh, you know, some of the things that occurred and get back to doing what South Carolina baseball is used to doing. And um, But at the same time, I mean, you know, we're <laughs> I think this program is very, very, very respected across the country. Um, they know and our opposition knows we have good players here. And uh, so I don't, I don't per se, I don't look at us and, and say that, you know, I don't know exactly the right word, but I, I have a feeling that people are going to be playing their best baseball against us. And likewise, there's a sense of urgency that our players have that we know we need to go out and, and play our best baseball and, and, and get back to doing what, we're, what we do. David, and then back to John. Chad, two questions. First of all, is TJ Hopkins one of those guys in the mix for one of those outfield spots tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. And um, he's a very explosive athlete. And, uh, um, he calls havoc on the bases. He's very good in the outfield. He can run the bases. Um, he's a good bunner. Uh, need to cut down on his strikeouts a little bit, but at the same point in time, sometimes you don't cut out those strikeouts if you're not getting opportunities to play. Um, I think the world of TJ, and he's going to play a lot for us this year, and he may be in there tomorrow. I, you know, I hadn't quite made that decision yet, but uh, you'll certainly see him this weekend. And secondly, what do you think Saturday's going to be like for Braden Webb? He hadn't pitched in two years, correct? Is that is that going to be a, a nervous or anticipatory <laughs> time for him? Well, I think it'll be nervous for everybody. You know, it's opening day. It's opening weekend. And, um, you know, I think Clark will have some butterflies tomorrow. And, and Braden, obviously, it's been a, it's been a long time since he towed the, towed the rubber with, in a competitive situation. Um, and, but he's ready. He's worked hard. He's healthy, thrown the ball extremely well. We feel very confident giving him the ball. Uh, he's got great stuff, and uh, he's a kid that is eager and anxious to show what he can do. And um, so I, 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 have a, I have the utmost confidence that Braden will throw very well. But, yeah, he'll be, he's going to be excited. He's, an, he's, he's excited if he's pitching in the backyard against his little brother. I mean, that's who Braden Webb is. He's, a, he's, a, he's, he's wired awfully tight, and um, it's just who he is. And, but we're, we're excited about giving him the ball. Three wins, obviously, but is there anything that you want to see this weekend that's important to you, be it just a team personality or something from a specific player or position, anything like that that's important to see this weekend? Well, you know, I, I'm going to learn a lot this weekend. I mean, I've been around these guys since August, and uh, and I know I, I feel like I've learned a lot up to this point. But when a new team walks in and the games are being played and the lights get turned on, you learn something else. And uh, – we're going to learn who handles the pressure a little bit better, who, who's, uh, who performs uh, better in a competitive type situation. Uh, I'm going to learn a lot about my team. What I hope to learn is these players are as good as I think they are. And, uh, and they had great composure, and they pitched, and they competed at each and every pitch, and they battled at the plate. We played great defense, and uh, we cheered for each other. We had great camaraderie in the dugout. All those things are what I hope to see, and that's what I think I'll see. I, I'm – you know, I'm excited about this group of guys, and um, I'm excited about watching them play this weekend and helping them this weekend. But they uh, they put in a lot of work, and they and they worked there extremely hard um, uh, to put themselves in this spot to to have a successful season. And 
uh, they're eager and anxious to get it started. Obviously, the uh, the final roster you have is, is a little bit different, a little bit smaller than the the, roster, the spring roster we were given. How difficult was it uh, the last three or four spots? And I'm guessing, uh, you know, the Park, Crow, and Morris were all, were all retro. So, so to that extent, how did, how did those three spots sort of make your decision easier? Well, it was uh, it was an easier decision this year just because, you know, some kids have been in the program quite a bit of time and knew they weren't going to probably play as much so they made the decisions themselves before I had to make it um, there was some that that were on the bubble you know for instance a Weber Pike who's done great things for this program and been a great student and he just wanted to play and he, he kind of sensed that he wasn't going to play and uh, you know so we lost a couple roster spots over the last week and and with Park going down it actually made it the numbers worked themselves out a little bit, so to speak. I didn't have to make a very, very difficult decision. The difficult decision was red shirt and a freshman. Uh, uh, Harrison Smith sewn pretty well in some scrimmages. Uh, and, and, you know, I, that was the toughest call. Yeah, but I think that's what's best for his future is Harrison. Uh, and the other decision was the, uh, made to give Dylan Hodge a roster spot, a senior. He's been fighting back from an injury. He had shoulder surgery last year. And, um, you know, he, he, he got that final spot. Much in the same the question about Braden. How's Taylor looking? Have you been pleased with his progression during this uh, spring leading up to the game? Do you think he's fully ready as he gets ready to make that start? Taylor? Um, yeah, we're, uh, Taylor has been his, – his starts have been uh, very clean. His bullpens have been very clean. He feels good about how his arm, how it feels, how it's responded to the procedure that he had in the fall. And I saw something in, in Taylor last year when he was pitching for the Blowfist that made me think that him being a starter was more suitable to him. And, uh, and I think he's more comfortable in that spot, more comfortable in that role. Uh, his curveball is a lot better than it's been. I think you'll see his pitch ability. Uh, I think you'll see the improvement in his pitch ability, the command of his pitches. And uh, if he's throwing strikes and his ball's running all over the place and he's getting his breaking ball in there, he's tough to hit because his, his velocity is high right now. I mean, he's low to mid-90s. He's throwing great. He feels great. Uh, and I think he's more comfortable and suited to start. And uh, that's why we put him in that spot. What do you expect to get out of Brandon McIlwain this weekend? Well, I hope to get Brandon in there a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not – I don't know if I'm going to start him tomorrow or any of the three games. Uh, but he's worked hard. He, he's practiced with us. Uh, he's missed a few here and there because of some football responsibilities. Uh, but it, he also missed the fall, you know, because he was still in high school. So, uh, he's, he's behind the repetitions – and the knowledge and the comfort level that our other guys are just because of he hadn't been here but a couple of weeks. But he's he's making adjustments. Uh, he's done some great things in the scrimmages. He's very athletic. Um, and I hope to give him some opportunities. Uh, you know, the, there's a lot of, there's a few outfielders that, that have played well and deserve opportunities. And Ren is one of those, but so is Danny Blair. Gene Cohn's in there, has been a, an experienced guy here. Obviously, Dom's going to start tomorrow and be in the starting lineup. TJ's being thought about as well. LT Tolbert's a kid that I want on the field tomorrow. And, uh, and you know, I hadn't made him a decision on how I'm going to put him in there. And uh, so there's a number of guys out there that I'm concerned. Brandon's one of those. Hope to give him some cracks. But, you know, there's some, uh, there's some other guys too that, that, that I'm anxious to put out there. Coach, with all the games you play over the course of a season, what separates, what sets apart opening day from the rest? Well, it's a new team. And this year's <laughs> – a little bit different because uh, we got so many new faces. And, and I haven't seen some of these kids play in a game. I've seen them practice. I've seen them play against each other. Uh, but I'm anxious to see Dom uh, Thompson-Williams play against an, a, a different team. I'm anxious to see some of these freshmen, how they react to 7,000 people in the stands. Uh, uh, I think the, the being a little bit unfamiliar with how your guys will respond kind of creates some excitement. and. Uh, that, that's but opening day is very very unique and if you put on a baseball uniform you've been in a dugout you don't quite understand it and get a feel of it but it's like Christmas you know this is Christmas Eve to us we're we're going to be excited I won't sleep tonight our players won't sleep tonight and and um, you know it, we'll wake up earlier than we usually wake up because we're going to be anxious to get to the field and play and that's, that's kind of what makes baseball and opening day so special 
all these game co confidentials kind of gave him an inside look to the team. How important is it to you with all these new faces? It's just to kind of show who these players really are. Well, our production team and our video uh, team uh, have done a great job, uh, you know, and, and I, I love for our fans and the media and our people to be able to see what goes on behind the scenes to get to know some of our players, what they go through on a daily basis. I mean, the, the episode three today that came out, you know, showed a great story about Matt Vogel and all he and his family have been through. Um, it just puts a personal touch to it. And it also allows our recruits to see what goes on on a daily basis in our program. And I think that's extremely beneficial as well. And uh, we try to talk to our players all the time about having balance in their life and um, don't want it to be about baseball all the time, even though baseball is a very important part of their life. And I think our fans get to see that firsthand. And I think it's been neat for our team. It's been neat for our players. It's neat for our fans. Uh, and, you know, it's neat for me. And I, to even learn a little bit more uh, about my team and my players that they may be a little bit um, gun shy to, to approach me about one on one. Um, so I think it's a win for everybody. And I hope they'll keep it going. And I've, I've told them they can't. I think they were just going to do a few episodes, and I'm trying to talk them into doing more. Ted, do you feel like there is any extra pressure to make the NCAA tournament last year after not making it, or make it this year after not making it last year? And just what's kind of that move going into the year? Well, we're, we're I mean, honestly, I, there's always pressure to perform well here. I'm not looking at this year any different than I did last year, or my second year, my first year. And I'm not, it's not any different to me. We want to perform at a high level. We want to be one of the best teams in the country. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to get caught ahead of looking to what's going on in June. I have to try to – I'm going to try to win tomorrow, <laughs> take it one day at a time. And I know that's some coaches speak. But um, honestly, that's my mentality. I'm not, I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself. I'm going to be the best team that we can be today and the best team we can be tomorrow, and I'm going to do it one day at a time. Uh, but I know the expectations of South Carolina baseball. I understand it. Our players do. And uh, we're expected to perform at a high level. And that's why we coach here, and that's why our players come here. And uh, I have, uh, you know, it's my intent that we'll, we're, we're going to play. We're going to play at a high level this year. I, I feel like I have a team that can do that. But I'm also anxious to see because we have so many new faces. Along those same lines, whether it's you, Frank, Will, everybody, everybody, can you just put us in a, in a competitor's frame of mind that, regardless of what happens or what people say on the outside, what drives you inside is probably more intense than than what the fans are uh, are thinking. Yeah, it's much more so. I mean, uh, uh, I want my team to reach its potential. I want my team to play up to its potential. That's 100% of my focus each and every day. I don't deal with the outside stuff or what fans are saying. or I just want my team to reach its potential. That's where I get great enjoyment. And uh, if our team stays together and they continue to work the way that they've worked up to this point, I feel like we will perform at a very, very high level. But I just uh, – the goal for each team that I'm a part of, and especially, I mean, in this team as we start tomorrow, we start a 56-game journey, is I just want my team to play and reach its potential, play up to its potential. If they do, I feel we'll be one of the best teams in the country. Thank you, Al. Thank you.